everybody. Um, so this is the the start of a, a a new project, and for those of you who have been on my channel for a bit, you have already seen me talk about it and announce it, but I haven't done any work to it. Um, but I'm going to do this a little bit differently, and I'm going to explain it a little bit differently and, and more thoroughly in this first video because I suspect that there will be some people who, who don't typically watch my channel who might just for this series because the nature of what it is. So, um, so to give you the background, um, this project is a the the mishmash, the mashup of a 1963 Cree C R E E travel trailer, 14 foot roughly, um, manufactured in Michigan, uh, I think south southwest Michigan, if I remember right. Um, but uh, obviously, it's a whatever that is, a 60 year old, um, 61 year old camper. And we are combining it with a 1967 International Lodestar that we already own, that I've already restored. And you can check out those videos uh, on the channel. As I was editing my video, we had I found that we had had some technical difficulties. So it's later on tonight, but I'm going to finish my intro. Um, so in light of that, that we've got that camper and we've got that truck, the goal here is that we are going to create essentially a Super C. Um, we're not going to have an entry out of the cab into the camper. Um, there wouldn't be enough room in that tiny little cab to get through anyway, but uh, we just don't want to cut it up either. And it's, there's no wind to that because we're not actually going to be driving this. Um, this is a trailer queen. So that being said, um, here's a little, uh, a, a really, really basic and unskilled uh, Photoshop of what I envision this would look like. Um, and, uh, we're going to create a period correct, you know, class C, super C, medium duty motorhome. We decided to do this because when we go to truck shows, we have two trucks that we take and it's really hard to get those two trucks there. Um, we can't camp, we can't do anything like that. And so we have to stay in hotels and it's already really expensive to put diesel fuel in these trucks and to pay for the food and to pay for the registrations. And it would be really nice not to have to spend thousands of dollars a year on hotels. And this was a good way to get a really cool period correct project um, that I think will get some cool attention. We'll get a heck of a lot of use out of it and, and be much happier than, you know, when the truck had a flatbed, a dump flatbed on it. It was cool. We never used it. We never would. Uh, this is a much more usable, functional uh, restoration. So we're excited about it. And... Uh, Hope you guys enjoy it and uh, come along for the ride. We'll, we'll do it in a series here and get it done over the course of the next few months.
All right, guys. Well, it is a nasty cold weekend following the one where we tore everything apart. Um, you can see this back corner is just as bad as I expected. Um, the floor in this back half is pretty well gone, too. Um, but I expected that as well. So um, up here, we're not too bad. The forward portion, especially on this side, we had a tiny bit of softness right here. It's getting a little punky in this this form board up here. Um, and this side is actually pretty good other than just some plywood that was out here. But um, And then over here, obviously, we had a similar, this has been, some of this has been replaced once already, but we've got rot right here in the forward edge of that wheel well. So, um, what I'm debating, and it's really hard to see from this side because I got my truck parked here. But if we go over here, you know, if we look at the profile, so at the front of the camper, it brings this curve down and then notches in and then it went straight for where the windows are and then it bellied and curved in. And they had that two by six that they had shaved and did some blocking here to get that curve. Well, the problem is when I'm mounting it to a truck, I've got to clear my stack anyway. It's going to be, it's on the other side, but it's got to be forward of this. I'm not changing it to a weed burner exhaust. The stack's going to stay. And then we got to have room for these windows to open anyway, because they're a, a, whatever you want to call that, a butterfly style or whatever. But then this space here and where this curve is, is kind of, it's not used. Um, it's just going to be dead space. And I think it's going to look a little funky on the truck. So I'm debating, since I've got to put new tin on it anyway, um, and this board, if, if they were both in good shape, I wouldn't think much of it, but this board is punky. So I'm, I'm really debating on, when I do this, just pulling this straight down. And we'll extend the floor. we got to fix that anyway. Um, so we'll see what we come up with, but I think it's just going to fill the space on the chassis better. I, it, I Since I have to rebuild this whole back, I, I thought about getting rid of the back and making the back and then just flipping making make back straight and then flipping the whole trailer around um but just the shape back here lends itself to be the back of the of the truck and then it puts the door on the driver's side which you know we're never going to be at a campground but at the same time it's just ingrained in my head that your door is on the, the passenger side of the vehicle so i think we'll stick with the way it is but i do think i'm going to straighten that out we're not going to really gain any space up here um it's actually just going to be false wall but i'm i'm okay with that so, um, but before I go tearing into that, I want to get these lower boards figured out, get the rest of the floor out, plywood in, um, and then rebuild this back. We got to get some structure back and then we'll deal with the front and then we're on to, um, hopefully scoring some, some paneling for the sides and moving forward. So I'll show you in here. What we've got is a whole stack of lumber. We got some plywood. We got some some Luan subfloor to go over top of the plywood. We got a whole bunch of two by twos. We got some two by fours. We got some two by sixes because we've got a lot of work to do. So I don't know if it's going to be enough. <laughs> it's going to get me started, and we'll we'll go from there. Boom. All right. Well, I ripped the rest of the secondary floor. This thing burned at some point. Somebody burned a hole in the floor right there. But um. I mean, the good news is, is the, the original floor is, is relatively solid, other than a little chunk right there by the door, and then the back like two feet. So we've got plenty of plywood to replace the sections that are bad. Um, somebody literally had particle board in parts of this. Like, who puts particle board on the floor over rot? Like, idiots. Somebody's been in here um, at some point and done some work and... They didn't really know what they were doing. Not that I'm an expert, but... Um, anyway, I took another load of junk. Um, we've still got a whole lot of... Got a whole lot of work to do, but... I elected to bring it in the barn. I collected all my 3500 HD stuff and stuck it back there. And we got a transmission and we got steel over there, but it does barely fit, especially now that I've pulled the one vent. And I, I just can't... It's springtime. I hate springtime, guys. It's the worst season. At least in fall and winter, I know what I'm in for. 
spring is like it'll tease you with it, especially in stupid Michigan. It'll tease you with a 70 degree day, and then it'll be a weekend like this where it pours rain and it's 36 degrees. Um, and I can't start. This is not like a two hour project, you know. So I can't start doing all this and then leaving it sit outside to get wet. Um, modern pine lumber does not do well when it gets wet. Luan really doesn't do well when it gets wet. So I got to have it in here. I can still pull it in and out as needed. If it's a nice day and I need to do other things. Yep, sure, we can pull it out. And I'm, I've got a couple lines on some skin. It's really hard to find. It's really expensive. But I've got, hopefully, some options there. Um, but anyway, in the meantime, it's going to have to be in the barn. So, so uh, yeah, I'm not going to take you long for everything. Um, I'll bring it back when i got a little bit of work done. Well... The deconstruction has reached a fever pitch, fellers and fellettes. Um, so that's a bunch of rotten wood. We're down to good wood. Um, let me just climb through the, the new rear entrance here. Um, cut out the burn spot. That wasn't so much rotted as it's got to change. There's a little moisture, but not bad. And then we got the rot up there. We're, this is all nice dry stuff. We're good here. Um, it's uh, It's got a bow to it. It's got an arch, but I, I wonder if that was intentional when it was built. I don't really know. But we're, we're not going to deconstruct this whole trailer. We've already got 50% of it out. So um, there is some more slightly damp stuff, but I think a lot of that was just because it was getting wet. Um, I don't see a lot of horror other than up there. Maybe there, but I, I think we're going to be able to be okay with that. Um, we're going to leave that be. Same with around that vent. You know, that stuff's going to have to get fixed, but I think we're okay. Um, so we've got a nice spot right here where we can um, we can make some cuts. We can sister some, some studs, two-by-two two studs down. Um, same thing over here. We can make that work. This is going to be the worst of it is creating this curve. That's doable. The biggest issue is that dual 22.5s are quite a bit wider than this, you know, 17 and a half inches we have available to the original trailer frame. <coughs> I'm going to run a 2x2 two two frame at 34 inch spacing down the middle. That's easy. Um, what's not, though, is we have to box this frame in before we can even do any of this. And, of course, what that means is this axle has to go. But uh, at any rate, we gotta, we got we to gotta do a whole lot of supporting before we cut all that free and then we weld in the, the, the box. But we've got to get that done now because we have to set our floor and cross members and all that stuff has to work around that. Um, so then... What I can do is if I get to it tomorrow, then I can finish, once I've got that new wheel opening, then I can resupport, run new um, new lower plywood, new um, joists, if you will. Um, <coughs> and then my new top plywood all out. Once we've got that consistent floor plan everywhere, then it's it's pretty straightforward. Then I can resupport all my walls um, coming down. I'll be doing some sistering and some some blocking and whatever. We're gonna make them nice and strong. We'll get that squared away. Then once we know that the structure of the camper is back, then we can reshape our back wall here, um, and we're in good shape. All right. Well, we got rid of some more. There's the axle uh, <coughs> because I don't only have so much room to jack up. So I just uh, I just cut the axle in half to uh, to get it out. Um, I'm not going to reuse that section when I box the frame in. <laughs> I'm going to order some new steel. Uh, that's just going to be too hard to clean up and weld. It's real thin gauge stuff. So I'm going to go with just slightly heavier. I'll still do a, a tube, but um, but uh, what I have decided to do is because I've I've made my marks roughly where the center of axle is going to be on the load star and I know what my dimensions are and I think the simplest thing to do will be um, I'm actually gonna continue this cut right here um, 
all the way across at this cross. There's a there's a joist right here. And I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna get rid of that whole floor in the middle. That way I can run new two by four joists all the way across, uh, right to exactly where I need my fender opening to be. I've done my measurements. We're gonna be able to build this with a flat floor because of my 255 tires. Um, I'll have to create a fender opening, but it'll be it'll be within the frame rail section. So uh, I've got some sheet metal. I think I can do that with. Um, build some some spray blockers essentially. So um, so the next step tomorrow is uh, well, first we gotta get this crap out of here. But the next step is going to be to I'm gonna crib up this whole frame. I gotta support it at four different points. So that then I can, once the floor is off, of course, um, I can make my cuts. But so step one is to crib up this frame, get it all nicely supported. Then I need to, I'm going to use some steel. I think I got a whole bunch of steel over here. So some steel and some blocking one way or the other, whether we use wood or whatever. But we're going to support um, at the next set of somewhere back here. We'll, we'll pick a point and we'll support once we're cribbed, we'll support the ceiling all the way to the ground, all the way to the concrete floor of the barn. That way then we're not relying on that floor anymore. At that point then that floor, the rest of that floor can get cut out to the point where I'm doing it. Then I've got nice, nice wide open space to work with. All right, well I apologize because I just can't get far enough back in this barn <coughs> on this large trailer, but uh, okay. Um, floors removed. Obviously, everything's cribbed up. I scraped up as much of that uh, more than likely asbestos-infused tile as possible. Um, I got all the loose stuff, and that's just the way she goes. So that will be covered with Luan subfloor and then vinyl floor when it's said and done. So what I've decided is I've, I took some measurements, and I, I just labeled everything because this is obviously also going to get painted. So most important one, center of rear axle on the truck, mind you, not the way it was. Um, this is the end of the frame of the truck. This is um, basically just marking that cross member. And then based on the fact that my tires are 37 inches in diameter and where that frame extension is that supports the steps, that can stay, that clears the tire by a few inches. So we're gonna match that over here. That cross member is going to go right in that location, and that's where our frame cut is going to be. We have a matching frame cut right here. This is going away. That cross member is going away too, but it will be repurposed for some stuff on the front. So I've taken all my measurements now for the new, um, it's just a little two by two subframe. And then the what we've got to do too is we've got to then pull that subframe out. There's going to be some a series of 12 inch wings that pull that out to this frame. Um, because otherwise we're relying on just these welds on the old cross members um, to transfer the load from the new 34 inch spacing rails out to these. Uh, these rails are at like 58, so that's not going to work. Um, so we're going to actually weld in supports across. So none of this has to be very heavy. Um, this is never going to carry the load that let's say a dump bed or a um, you know, a tanker or anything that would normally be on the back of a truck this size, this is going to be really, really light comparatively. But we've still got to give it the support it needs. So um, I've already cut off the um, two of those those frame extensions, I'm calling them. And, you know, to be honest with you guys, I think I'm going to make my cuts and get rid of this stuff today. Even though I don't have my steel, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I am. Um, I'm going to make my cuts and clean everything up. I'll weld those extensions back on, and then we'll be cleaned up and prepped and ready to... Um, to burn in those those new pieces once we get them, um, I got I want I got so many projects going on. I got so much time on the weekends, and I want to move this along while I've got time to do it. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll bring you back, and poof, there is everything done. Um, I, I took the liberty of cutting the rear bumper off. Um, it was rusted out. Time to go. Got a new piece of steel ordered for that, or will have some ordered. And there's the cuts all made for the frame box. Um, everything's ground down and prepped for welding. So um, we've got some mud flat brackets over there ready that we'll weld on too. So sometime later this week um, or this coming weekend, we'll box that frame in, get this all done, and uh, 
Um, probably weld some casters onto the back so this thing can be rolled out when the time comes. But uh, then we'll be ready to start putting in the floor. So that's exciting stuff. I won't bore you any more with this. Um, the exciting part comes on the next video in the series. So I hope you guys enjoyed this installation on the, uh, the 1963 Cree slash International Super C vintage trailer build, whatever we want to call it. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we're going to turn this thing from trash into treasure. And I hope you come along and join me on it. It's going to be pretty awesome when it's said and done. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Tune in for the next installment. I appreciate you. Have a great week.